it's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. Hello and welcome to Growing Up, a lesson in which we look at both puberty and the menstrual cycle. Puberty is the time when lots of changes take place in your body and it normally happens between the ages of 10 and 15. It happens earlier for girls and later for boys. So while the girls begin to develop, the boys take a little bit longer. The girls look like this and the boys look like this. They remain fresh-faced as puberty for them kicks in a year or two later. So at school, it's around year nine when we see the biggest difference because although we all go through puberty between the ages of 10 and 15, that's quite a long age gap. And so while one of your friends might have shot up and already gone through their growth spurt, you may not have. So it's important to remember to keep calm. It's only puberty. Now you might imagine that that message is for you. However, it's not. It's for your mum and dad and all the people around you because they go through puberty with you. Not only do we get a lot of physical changes, which we'll talk about in a moment, that, that is changes to your body, but because your hormones are being released, we see a lot of hormonal changes which can affect your mood and your emotional state. Let's have a look at the changes that happen for boys. So something happens in the brain during puberty that sparks the whole process off. And a messenger, a hormone, is released from your brain into your blood. It travels all over your body, but it actually causes an effect at the testes. And the testes respond by making a hormone called testosterone. Now that hormone has a lot of far-reaching effects. So the first changes that take place are called the primary sexual characteristics and the testosterone is responsible for those changes. The testosterone acts on the testes so that they begin to make sperm. The testosterone also acts on the penis causing it to grow and mature and then you'll have your secondary sexual characteristics. Your voice box, your larynx will change shape. And the effect of that is that your voice becomes deeper and your shoulders, shoulders will continue to widen. In fact, the clavicle, your shoulder bone, continues to grow until about the age of 25. You'll get hair around your groin, around your penis. You'll get hair on your chest. Your legs, your arms will become hairier. You'll begin to get hair on your face. And all these changes are called secondary sexual characteristics and of course these are the changes that we can see along with them become a lot of other changes to your mental state because your hormones are all over the place testosterone is a male hormone that's also responsible for aggression and because your hormones haven't settled down then sometimes you can feel yourself getting really frustrated and really cross and angry about things for females, it's a similar story. Something in the brain, a hormone, is released into the blood. It travels all over the body and it causes the ovaries to produce another hormone called oestrogen. And oestrogen is the hormone that's responsible for all the other changes that take place. You can see the differences on this diagram. The primary sexual characteristic is that eggs that are contained in the female ovary begin to develop and begin to be released one a month. This happens alongside menstruation where the blood thick lining develops each month and is shed during a process called menstruation or more commonly called the period. Other changes that take place in the female body are called secondary sexual characteristics and those kinds of changes are all designed to protect the developing embryo and fetus and help the development of the baby. 
like the male, will also see a development of muscle. However, that is pretty much masked in the female because we also see the laying down of fat. Fat around the legs, the abdomen, the uh, rear side, all laid down because then we've got a little bit of extra cushioning should the female get pregnant. We also see the development of the mammary glands or boobs as you may call them. Not only are they a sign that the female has reached sexual maturity in her development, but they're also then developed to be able to feed a baby if it's born. And just like the male, we see a lot of emotional changes taking place, mood swings, because we've got this disruption of hormones that disrupts the way we act and the way we think. It's weird and wonderful. And so while this is happening to the female and the female's getting a lot of attention and the boys finally catch up and begin to take interest in the girls, this is what happens to them. It's like life sick joke. All those hormones cause such a change that we often break out in acne. And so we will need to do a lot more of this because not only will we have the acne on our face, we begin to smell. Our hormones are responsible for chemicals that we give off, smells called pheromones. And back in the day, these used to play a useful part in attracting members of the opposite sex. And unfortunately, these days, those smells are just considered to be antisocial. If you walk into a year nine classroom after they've spent a sweaty hour in there, you can smell those pheromones. Yes, year nine are definitely the smelliest year group. And suddenly when you think that life couldn't be any worse, you've got all these emotional changes going on, all these changes in your body that aren't in line with the changes happening in your friend's body, you also begin to have your period. Well, of course, this applies to females, not males. The period is a period of time. It's usually between five and seven days. And it's the time when the lining of the uterus begins to shed. When we say shed, we mean it breaks away. And when it breaks away, it passes out of the vagina. Now, obviously, as we make the transition into womanhood, that can feel traumatic for most females. But beyond that, it's nothing more than inconvenient. You need to know and understand the menstrual cycle, not least because you need to know when to expect your next monthly bleed. You also need to know when you're going to ovulate and that means release the egg because whether you're trying to avoid pregnancy or whether you're trying to get pregnant, you need to know when is the most likely time. When we look on the internet, we find lots of different charts but the one thing that they have in common is that they all start on day one and day one is the most obvious day of the cycle. It is the day that you begin to bleed. Everybody knows when that day happens, so you know that that is your day one. If you started counting your menstrual cycle from the day you ovulated, that isn't an obvious day. So whatever form the chart you're looking at takes, it will start on day one, which is the five to seven days of menstruation. That is the loss of the blood from the uterus wall out through the vagina. All the other days we then count from day one and it's considered that on day 14 that is when you ovulate. In other words that is when you release an egg from your ovary and the egg is able to hang around for a day or two and be fertilized. It's quite a short time period and it makes you wonder how an anyone ever actually gets pregnant because within about 24 hours of it being released it needs to be fertilized. If it isn't fertilized it continues its passage down the oviduct or fallopian tube and it passes through the uterus and eventually it will pass out through the vagina as you urinate 
and it will pass down the toilet. You're not able to see this. It's not a significant event. In fact, most women wouldn't be able to tell you when they actually ovulate. Most people who do know when they ovulate are actually doing a dipstick test. That means that they have a wee on a little stick, a little like the pregnancy test, and it actually tells them if they are releasing an egg. And the kind of people who would do this dipstick test are the women who are actually trying to increase their chances of fertilization and pregnancy. Yes, during the age of adolescence, when all the changes take place, there's a lot going on. It's awkward, but everybody's been through it and you'll make it too. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and wonderful. It's weird and whoa.